Acts chapter 11, verse number 19. Now they which were scattered abroad upon the persecution that arose about Stephen traveled as far as Phoenix and Cyprus and Antioch, preaching the word to none but unto the Jews only. And some of them were men of Cyprus and Cyrene, which when they were come to Antioch, spake unto the Grecians, preaching the Lord Jesus. And the hand of the Lord was with them, and a great number believed and turned unto the Lord. Then tidings of these things came unto the ears of the church which, which was in Jerusalem. And they sent forth Barnabas, that he should go as far as Antioch, who when he came and had seen the grace of God, was glad and exhorted them all that with purpose of heart they would cleave unto the Lord. For he was a good man and full of the Holy Ghost and of faith, and much people was added unto the Lord. Then departed Barnabas to Tarsus for to seek Saul. And when he had found him, he brought him unto Antioch. And it came to pass that a whole year they assembled themselves with the church and taught much people. And the disciples were called Christians first in Antioch. And that's our text this morning. We're looking at the disciples being called Christians first in Antioch. And in these days came prophets from Jerusalem unto Antioch. And there stood up one of them named Agabus and signified by the spirit that there should be great dearth throughout all the world, which came to pass in the days of Claudius Caesar. Then the disciples, every man according to his ability, determined to send and relief unto the brethren which dwelt in Judea, which also they did, and sent it to the elders by the hands of Barnabas and Saul. So let's ask the Lord to bless his word. Our Father, thank you, Lord, for the text that's before us this morning. Lord, it's so such an encouraging text as we look at the first mention of Christians, Lord, in the Bible. And we know, Lord, that they were already what we call Christians, but this is the first time the name is used. And I pray that as we look at the name being used and what it signified then, I pray that we'll realize what it means to be a Christian today. And I pray that we'll be the people that you've called us to be. Help us, Lord, to, um, to shine for Jesus everywhere we go. I pray, Lord, that you'll fill me with your spirit, Lord, to preach your word this morning. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Well, this morning, we're going to answer probably the most basic question, but perhaps one of the hardest questions. It's the question, what is a Christian? What is a Christian? I think you all know that the, the world's definition of, Christ, of a Christian is far off. Uh, the world just says, if you go to church, you're a Christian. If your parents were a Christian, you're a Christian. Uh, many churches don't believe the gospel. Many churches aren't filled with Christians. But, and so the world's definition is far off, to say the least. But I think when we look at the Bible, you're going to find that many believers' definition of Christian is off the mark as well. In fact, maybe you're off this mark, the mark this morning in your definition of Christian. Because this morning, as we look to our Bibles, I want you to see the truth that a Christian is a disciple of the Lord Jesus Christ. You notice in the text it says, and the disciples, in verse 26, the disciples were called Christians first in Antioch. A Christian is supposed to be a disciple. That's what we are. We're disciples. You say you're a Christian. Praise the Lord. Well, let me ask you, are you a disciple of the Lord Jesus Christ? The text says the disciples were called Christians first at Antioch. The early church, they considered themselves to be his disciples, just like Peter and Andrew, just like James and John. They considered themselves his followers, his students, his helpers, and they considered the Lord Jesus Christ their master and Lord. You know, when we think of the disciples, we're th we think of the 12, right? We think of the 12 disciples, the Peter, James, Andrew, John, uh, Philip, Nathaniel, Matthew, James, the son of Alphaeus, uh, Judas, not Iscariot, Simon, the Canaanite. You know, I, we think of those 12. I, I keep going and try to get 12, but I don't even know how many I said so far. But anyways, there's 12 disciples, and that's who we, and I didn't even say Judas Iscariot. 
Right? We think of those 12 men as the disciples. But do you realize that in the book of Acts, not once is those 12 men called the disciples. They're called the apostles. The word disciple is used 29 times in the book of Acts. Or no, sorry, 31 times in the book of Acts. And every time it's referring to regular Christians like you and me. They consider themselves disciples. And you think of what we are today in the New Testament. We're supposed to be disciples. The fact is the word Christian is only used three times in the whole Bible. Three times. It's used here in Acts 11, 26. It's used in uh, 1 Peter chapter 4. And it's used in Acts 26. And every time it's used, it's used in the way that the world referring to us, not the way we look at ourselves. In Acts 11, 26, this is what the world is calling the disciples at Antioch. They're calling them Christians. In 1 Peter chapter 4, verse, 4, verse 16, it's if any man suffer as a Christian before the world, suffering as a Christian. And then in Acts 26, it's an unsaved man, Agrippa, who says, almost thou persuadest me to be a Christian. They thought of them, the, the world thought called them Christians, but they always thought of themselves as disciples. And disciples, this text that says they're called Christians first at Antioch, and then the very next couple of verses, verse 29, then the disciples. <laughs> Who's the disciples? It's the ones they called Christians. It's the church at Antioch. The disciples, every man according to his ability, determined to send relief unto the brethren which dwelt in Judea. So we're asking the question, what is a Christian? Well, it's simple. A Christian is a disciple of the Lord Jesus Christ. And this morning, as we go through these verses, we're going to see four things about a Christian that really shows how they are disciples of the Savior. Uh, first of all, verse 19 to 21, when you think of a disciple of the Lord Jesus Christ, thinking of a Christian, first of all, a Christian is a believer in Jesus Christ. A Christian believes in the Lord Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. Um, the disciples in the New Testament, uh, Matthew, Mark, or not Matthew, those are the Gospels. The disciples, Peter, James, Andrew, John, those guys, they were all believers. You remember in John chapter 6 when the multitudes were going away, when they were leaving the Lord Jesus Christ, and Peter said, to whom shall we go? Thou hast the words of life, and we believe and are sure that thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. They were believers. He spoke for them all. They believed on the Lord Jesus Christ. And so it is for a Christian. You're not a Christian if you don't believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. You might be a good person. You might be religious. You might go to church. You might be the best you can. But unless you have believed on the Lord Jesus Christ, you're not a Christian. A Christian is a believer on the Lord Jesus Christ. That's how our text starts in verse 19 to 21. Uh, it's picking up in Acts, 9, in Acts 11 after the persecution of Stephen. We're back to the main chronology of the book of Acts. And those who were scattered abroad, they went everywhere preaching the word all the way to Antioch, Antioch in Syria. But they were preaching the word to the Jews only. But after Cornelius got saved, God opened the door of faith to the Gentiles. And our text tells us how some men from Phoenix and Cyprus, they come to Antioch and they preach the Lord Jesus to the Grecians. And the Bible says that the hand of the Lord was with them. I like that. The hand of the Lord was with them. It wasn't by their power. It was by the power of the Lord. God's work, God's hand was at work there. And a great number believed and turned to the Lord. And the first group of Christians, that's just them. They were people who believed and turned to the Lord. They were believers. They put their faith and trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. They believed on him. The Bible says they turned. They turned to him. Turned to him from their idols. Turned to him from their wicked ways. Turned to him from their sin. Turned to the Lord Jesus Christ. Turned from their own way to go his way. 
turn from their religion to and their rituals and their righteousness to put their faith and trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. And they were saved by the grace of God. They were believers. Are you a Christian? Well, are you a believer? Paul and Silas said to that Philippian jailer at midnight, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. You want to be a Christian? All you have to do is believe. That's what Paul said to Agrippa. I know thou believest, he said. And he said, almost, almost thou persuadest me to be a Christian. He just couldn't believe. In order to be a Christian, you must believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. A Christian is a believer in Jesus. And number two, what's a Christian? He's a disciple. And so a Christian then is a follower of Jesus, a follower of Jesus. In the New Testament, those 12 disciples, they went with Jesus everywhere he went. They traveled with him, whether it was across the sea or whether it was into the garden, whether it was through Samaria, wherever it was that Jesus went, the disciples went too. And the New Testament believers in Antioch, the church in Antioch, the ones who were first called Christians, they too were noted for their decision to follow Jesus. They were his followers. In the text, we, we read in verse 21, or 22, sorry, of how the tidings of these things, the news of what happened, came unto the ears of the church, which was in Jerusalem. They heard the good news of the work being done in Antioch, and they sent forth Barnabas that he should go as far as Antioch. No one better they could send than Barnabas. I love Barnabas. He's one of my favorite characters in the Bible. He's the encourager. He was the one that uh, sold the parcel of land and laid it at the apostles' feet, and they surnamed him the son of consolation, and meaning that he was an encourager. And he's the one that stood up for Saul of Tarsus after he got saved back in Acts chapter 9 and, and brought him into the fold. And in Acts chapter 11, he's the perfect candidate to go to Antioch to see what's going on there. They sent Barnabas there. And uh, because it says he was a good man and full of the Holy Ghost and of faith and much people was added onto the Lord. He was, he was a good man full of the Holy Ghost and of faith. That's, that's something every Christian should strive to be, to be a good man and to be full of the Holy Ghost and faith. And speaking of the Lord Jesus Christ, we saw it, but we didn't really stop and consider it. But in Acts chapter 10, when Peter preached Jesus to Cornelius, he said he went about doing good. <laughs> that's what he did. He went about doing good. Our Savior was good and we're to be good like him. Good men, full of the Holy Ghost and of faith. And Barnabas comes to Antioch and he is glad, it says. He's glad when he sees the grace of God as God has saved all this multitude that was lost in their sin. Barnabas is rejoicing in what's going on there. And it tells us in the text that he exhorted them all, that's encouraged them all, lifted them all up, that with purpose of heart they would cleave unto the Lord that they would cleave unto the Lord. In other words, that they would be faithful to the Lord Jesus Christ, that they, would, that they would stick to him, that they would follow after him, that they would not let go of our Savior. And it's these ones that were cleaving to the Lord, not letting go of him, going, following the Lord everywhere he led them. They were the ones that were first called Christians. And Christian, the question for us is, are we cleaving to the Lord? Are we holding on to him? It's easy in this world to get distracted, isn't it? It's easy to become allured by this world, to feel that this world has something better to offer us, something exciting, something alluring, other than our Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. But a Christian, a real Christian, I'm not just saying someone that's saved, but someone that's a real Christian, someone that's really on fire for the Lord, that's the Christian he ought to be. He's clinging to the Lord Jesus Christ. He's old, holding on to him for all he's worth, and he's not letting go. He's dedicated to the Lord Jesus Christ. He's the song we're going to sing a little later. 
he has decided to follow Jesus, he's not turning back, not turning back. He's committed to Jesus. Another song, he's resolved no longer to linger, charmed by the world's delights, things that are higher, things that are low, nobler. These have alert his sights. He sings, I will hasten to him. Hasten so glad and free. Jesus, purest, highest, I will come to thee. The first Christians, they were dedicated to Jesus. They were clinging to him, cleaving to him. And just like Jesus, just like those 12 disciples were, just like Peter and Andrew left their boat behind them and followed after the Lord Jesus Christ, just like James and John left their dad in the boat and got out and followed the Lord Jesus Christ. Just like Matthew, who is literally in the middle of his jobs, sitting at the receipt of custom, got up to follow the Savior. And they never forsook him. They, they followed him all the way. Just like them. That's what these men and women in Antioch were. They were real Christians. When they got saved, they were really saved. They got baptized. They joined the church. They were there all the time, worshiping together, being together on fire for the Lord. And to the point where people started talking about them. And they said, what's up with this new group of people? They're, they're different. It used to be that a Christian was just a, a Jewish person because it was a Jewish people were the only ones getting saved. So they just thought it was another sect of Judaism. But now they see Jews and Gentiles all together. Like, what do we call this group of people? And they say, well, they're always talking about that Christ, that Lord Jesus Christ. Only name I can think of is to call him a Christian because that's who it is that they keep talking to us about. They're his people. And they recognize that they were separated, that they were the Lord's people dedicated to him. Are you dedicated to him like the Christians there in Antioch? And you say, I don't know. I want to be, but I'm just not... I'm just not what I should be. I'm not what I'd like to be. I'm just not. Well, things like that don't happen by accident. Barnabas instructed them to cleave to the Lord with purpose of heart. In other words, on purpose. Do it on purpose. Be, be a Christian on purpose. Live for the Lord Jesus Christ on purpose. It's something you got to choose to do. Being that kind of Christian doesn't happen by accident you need to purposely cleave to the lord the church in antioch they they were a group of christians who believed on the lord and they followed the lord and then number three the christians in antioch they were students of jesus what is a christian a christian is a disciple and what's a disciple a disciple is a student of jesus christ Disciple is a student. That's what the word disciple literally means. If you look in a Greek thesaurus or something and look up the word disciple, it's Matthias or something like that. And it literally means disciple, a pupil. It means a student or a learner. And in ancient days, the renowned teachers, they had disciples. They had their students who learned what they had to say. For instance, I guess, uh, Aristotle was a disciple of Plato. Plato was a disciple of Socrates. They were considered themselves their disciples because they considered those other people their teachers, their rabbis, their masters. Well, as a Christian, we're the disciples, the students of our Lord Jesus Christ. A Christian is someone who learns from him. The 12 disciples, they were students of Christ. Christ preached to the multitudes, but afterwards he'd come back to the 12 and he'd teach them. He'd unfold to them the parables that he had spoken earlier in the day. They were his students. They were learning under him. And it was the same for these first Christians. They were his disciples. They were students of the Lord Jesus Christ. You see that in verse 26. It tells us in verse 25, Barnabas is there and he thinks, you know, you know who needs to be here? Saul of Tarsus, he needs to be here. Let's get Saul here. So he departed, then departed Barnabas to Tarsus for to seek Saul. And when he had found him, he brought him onto Antioch. And it came to pass that a whole year they assembled themselves with the church 
and taught much people. And the disciples were called Christians first in Antioch. What are they doing for that year? That whole year, Saul and Barnabas and the three other teachers mentioned in chapter 13, I'm sure, Niger and uh, Lucius of Cyrene and Menaean, who had been brought up with Herod the Tetrarch, those five men, they're teaching the people. They're teaching them the truths of the Lord Jesus Christ. And the disciples, the Christians in Antioch, they were eager to learn. They were sitting under the teaching of God's word, sitting under the teaching of Christ. They wanted to learn of him. Are you a student of the Lord Jesus Christ? I'm thankful that you're listening today as God's word is taught. And as a Christian, it needs to be a priority in our lives. You're a disciple of Jesus. He's our rabbi. He's our teacher. And we are to learn of him. And you learn of him as you read his word and study it. Did you do that this week? Did you spend time in God's word? Did you spend time being taught? By the Lord Jesus Christ. You learn of him as his word is taught and preached. The disciples gathered together to hear the word as it was taught by Barnabas and Saul. And those five men in Acts 13 all faithfully taught that church. And that church faithfully sat under the teaching. They were disciples. Disciples are students. They were Christians, which were disciples of the Lord Jesus Christ. Are you a disciple? Are you one of his students? A Christian is a disciple who believes on the Lord, follows the Lord, and is a student of the Lord. And one more thing this morning. A Christian is a disciple. And what's a disciple? A disciple is a servant of the Lord Jesus Christ. A disciple is a servant of Christ. When you think of the the great teachers uh, and their disciples, Not only did the disciples always learn under them, but they served them. Remember Elisha and Elijah. Elisha washed the hands of Elijah. He was his minister and he was his disciple. He was the next prophet. And when we think of the disciples of our Lord, we think of them as his ministers, as his servants. They, They were there to help with his ministry. When it was the feeding of the 5,000, it was the 12 who passed out the bread. When it was time for crossing the sea, they rowed the boat while he was asleep. They, of course, realized that he's really, they needed his help, but they were there to serve. That's what they were there for. They were his disciples. When it was the Lord's Supper, Passover time, they were the ones that went ahead and prepared that upper room so it was ready. And for the believers in the church at Antioch, Nothing had changed. They were still his disciples. They were still the servants of the Lord Jesus Christ. In our text in verse 27, we read of how some prophets from Jerusalem come to Antioch. And in verse 28, one of them, the last prophet that's mentioned in the Bible, Agabus, stands up and signifies by the Spirit that there should be a great dearth throughout all the world, which came to pass in the days of Claudius Caesar. So Luke's telling us by the time that he sat down to write the book of Acts, uh, this had already happened, that this famine had taken place. And these men, when they heard it there in Antioch, they were concerned, not for themselves. You'd think you'd be concerned for yourself, you know? There's going to be a great dearth through all the world. Where's that going to leave us? But not these men. They were servants. They were disciples of the Lord Jesus Christ. And when they heard it, their concern was for the church in Jerusalem, for the churches in Judea, those ones that were poorer, those ones that were already at the line of poverty, already suffering. And they thought, a dirt's going to come. We're going to be okay. But what about them? How are their needs going to be met at this time? And so the Bible tells us that they took up an offering. Nobody's arm was twisted. <laughs> they gave by the grace of God. Uh, and nobody gave more than he should have given. Everybody gave according to his ability as God enabled him to give. And the Bible tells us that they took up this offering in verse 29. The disciples, I like that, that word's there again. The disciples, every man according to his ability, 
determined to send relief unto the brethren which dwelt in Judea, which also they did, and sent it to the elders by the hands of Barnabas and Saul. They sent the hands, the, the help, to the church in Jerusalem with, by Barnabas and Saul. They were determined to help, determined to minister to the needs of others. Now that's what a disciple does. A disciple serves. A disciple serves others. He ministers. He helps out. And that's what a Christian ought to be. Because what's a Christian? A Christian is a disciple. The world calls us Christians. But really, we're disciples. We're disciples of the Lord Jesus Christ. And at this time, there is much in our lives that a disciple of Jesus can do. And uh, perhaps there are some that are facing employment crisis that can be ministered to. In your church family, there are things you can do to help others and serve the Lord Jesus Christ. This time, everybody's in the same boat. You can call someone on the phone. You can offer them a word of encouragement. You can be there for them, do something to minister. Perhaps someone you know is quarantining who needs help with getting their groceries or someone shut in and needs a hand. But there are brothers and sisters around. Who need, who need some help. And a Christian is a disciple, a minister, a servant. And we can minister to the needs of others. The first Christians, they considered themselves as disciples and they ministered. They served others. And will we follow their example today? I wonder today, you know, are you a Christian? That's the most important question in the world. Like the word Christian is supposed to mean, though. We say, are you a Christian? I trust that you're saved this morning. If you're not saved, please speak to me somehow afterwards, messaging or whatever, or call me on the phone, whatever you need to do, and we can talk about that. But I trust that you know the Lord is your Savior. But also, are you a Christian the way the Bible refers to a Christian? Are you a disciple of the Lord Jesus Christ? So often we think, Think of a Christian as someone who merely believes in Jesus. I believe in Jesus, therefore I'm a Christian. In today's world, that, that might be the case, that that's what we consider to be a Christian. But that's only the first point. <laughs> that's, only the, that's only the beginning. You believe in the Lord, but then you follow the Lord. Then you're a student of the Lord, and then you're a servant. Of the Lord Jesus Christ. Are you the kind of Christian like the Christians were in Antioch, who were first called Christians? If not, will you be? Just follow Barnabas's instruction and with purpose of heart cleave to the Lord. You cleave to the Lord, the rest will be taken care of on its own. Cleave to the Lord and he'll show you what to do next. Let's pray. Our Father, thank you, Lord, for the text that was before us this morning, Lord, it's so uh, it's so challenging to think of those first Christians, Lord, the first ones called Christians, because we always use the word Christians and just think of it as anybody that uh, anybody that goes to a church, anybody that believes in Jesus at all. But it's so much more than that. It's not just being a born again Christian, but it's being a servant and being a, a follower of Thee and a student of the Lord Jesus Christ. And I pray, Lord, that we will endeavor to be real Christians, to be real disciples of our Lord Jesus. And I pray, Lord, that if there's someone that doesn't know him as their Savior, pray that they'll be saved. And I pray that you'll minister it to each heart. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.